Hello guys, what's up? The code Holic is here and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're gonna see how to uninstall Bootstrap 3 from E2 framework and install Bootstrap 4. This is not a very straightforward scenario, we need to fix a couple of things. So I have right now installed a very fresh installation of E2 basic application. And the web server, the uh, server PHP's built-in server is up and running. So we can navigate between pages and see that it's actually working. However, I have also configured a database and imported data from this test DB data uh, from the following data Sharmer uh, GitHub. Okay. So if I access the following link, I see grid view. I generated just simple CRUD. Uh, I see the following video and I have a lot of records and I see the pagination. So we need to fix the pagination as well when we convert, when we uninstall Bootstrap 3 and install Bootstrap 4. And I also have another link which just displays the same data using list view. And we need to do the same thing for list view as well. Basically, I'm not going to show how to render data. I'm just going to show how to use Bootstrap 4's components. Okay, first let's give it a little bit of observation of the Bootstrap 3 and Bootstrap 4 packages from GitHub. Okay, every class which is in, in, inside Bootstrap, uh, Bootstrap 3 package has a namespace of eBootstrap. Okay, so that's the namespace of every class which is inside eBootstrap package and that's for Bootstrap 3. However, in the E2 Bootstrap 4 package, every class has a namespace of Bootstrap 4, E Bootstrap 4. Okay, so whenever we see, after we uninstall Bootstrap 3 and install Bootstrap 4, whenever we see E Bootstrap namespace in our project, we need to replace its corresponding uh, version of the class. Uh, into Bootstrap 4. For example, if we see in our project Active Form or Active Field or Alert using Bootstrap namespace, we need to change it into Bootstrap 4 namespace. But the class names are, are the same, okay? We don't have to change the class names and usages. Okay, so let's open now Terminal and I'm going to uninstall Bootstrap 3. Composer, remove eSoft E2 Bootstrap. This will take a couple of seconds. Now let's install Bootstrap 4. Composer require eSoft E2 Bootstrap 4. Okay, let's hit the enter. Okay, Bootstrap 4 is already installed. Let's collapse the terminal and let's have a look in the browser. So we're going to see a lot of errors. Okay, what's this? Cannot fail to instantiate component or class e bootstrap bootstrap asset. So that's the thing. Now you know that the code is using e bootstrap namespace. However, this class doesn't exist in our application anymore. Let's see the place from which this is actually used. The error basically displays a DI container file, but that's not familiar for us. Okay, that, that comes from vendor. Okay, let's scroll down and find a file which is more familiar for, for us. Okay, right here we see views layouts main PHP and at line 11, excuse me, 13, here it is, app asset register this. So this is the line which basically causes the error. Let's open this app asset file. Assets, app asset, and right here in the depends array, we see e bootstrap bootstrap asset. This class doesn't exist anymore, so let's replace the namespace using bootstrap 4. Save and reload. Okay, we see something else. e bootstrap navbar not found. Okay, we need to fix this one as well. So let's go to views, layouts, main PHP, and right here we see this bootstrap namespace. Let's just replace with bootstrap 4. Okay. However, down below we just replace the namespaces for nav and navbar. Let's scroll down, and right here in the navbar, the following classes are used. Okay, navbar fix top, navbar inverse. So these classes doesn't exist in Bootstrap 4 anymore, and we will have to fix these classes when we make the application uh, working, okay? 
For now, let's just save and reload, and we see another error, which comes from widgets alert PHP. Okay, let's go to widgets alert PHP, and right here, down below, we are using e bootstrap alert. Let's just replace this e bootstrap for alert on line 62, and at the top as well, where we extend class, we are extending from e bootstrap uh, namespace. Let's change this into Bootstrap 4 as well. And right here, we see application working. Okay, so however, this breadcrumb is not looking good. So let's go to layout again. And down below, we are using these breadcrumbs. And the breadcrumbs are imported from widgets namespace. That's not imported from Bootstrap. Otherwise, it would, it would just fail. Okay, let's replace this into Bootstrap 4 namespace. Save and reload and this looks good as well. However, we don't see the menu, menu navigation at all, okay? That's simply because we are giving non-existing classes to the navbar, and this given classes overrides the existing classes of the navbar, okay? So let's just comment this line, or just comment the whole options, okay? Reload the page, and I see this nice menu. Okay, so let's inspect this, and let's have a look at the classes which is added to the navbar, okay? These are the classes added to the navbar. Okay, so let's come right here, and I'm going to actually make this navbar as a light. So if I just comment this, the navbar looks light. However, I'm gonna change this into dark, how it was before. However, we need to, right here, Paste the following classes. We don't want navbar because it is added automatically. Okay. Navbar expand LG. Navbar light PG light. That's good. So now we see the same kind of navbar. However, we can uh, we see that navbar is not fixed right now. So let's fix by adding class fixed top. Let's save and reload. And now it's actually fixed. And let's give it also dark style how it was before. Navbar dark pg dark save and reload and this is our navbar okay let's move this nav widget to the right side so down below we have this nav widget which has two classes navbar nav and navbar right this navbar right doesn't exist anymore so let's just give it a class ml auto margin left auto from bootstrap 4 save and reload and this is how it looks like so that's much better so if I navigate between pages, I see that on contact it fails because it uses class active form from eBootstrap namespace. Okay, let's quickly open the following file. Site, contact, and right here we just need to change the namespace and the declaration of the variable also in Bootstrap 4. Save and reload, and we see nice contact form, and we need to do the same thing on login page. Okay, so open login page, change into Bootstrap 4, just like this, save and refresh, and we see everything basically working. Home page about contact login. However, let's go to the employee page I showed before. So right here we have two problems. First of all, we don't see the action buttons delete, edit and um, view view buttons simply because the icons if we inspect this the icons are used from bootstrap 3 glyph icons okay right here we see these glyph icons and glyph icons doesn't exist in bootstrap 4 so we need to change this with some other icon maybe let's use font awesome icons and replace them with font awesome icons the second problem is about pagination the pagination is not looking nice okay so it's looking very bad and the same thing will be on pagination when we go to the list view down below okay so let's first fix the pagination so let's go to employee folder index.php and right here we have this grid view and grid view if we just open the grid view uh, it extends base list view and the base list view has down below a pager component okay this is a configuration array and by default the pager component uses class link pager 
which is which comes from e widgets namespace okay we need to change this if i just open the grid view and right here i write pager is a configuration array but the class needs to be link pager from bootstrap for namespace okay that is the class i want to give to the pager uh, component okay so let's save this and reload the employee page and down below we see this nice pagination which uses bootstrap 4 okay we need to do the exact same thing for list view okay let's go to list view right here and paste this pager save and let's access employee list and we see this nice pagination okay let's go to the employee page back and fix these action buttons in the grid view okay in the form however we see everything uh, everything is working except one thing the validation basically is not a red okay that's because the active form which is used inside this form PHP uses widgets namespace active form not bootstrap for namespace active form save reload click click outside and we see this nice color validation if we type something right there then we see nice green so everything basically works except these buttons okay let's make these buttons working so for this let's go to the index php and down below we have this action column let's observe this action column a little bit so this action column if we scroll down right here we see that it uses this glyph icon as i mentioned before it is inside the any default button i think and right here we see that it uses this glyph icon as a class okay so we need to change something right here so either we need to override this init default button method first of all uh, like we have two options first is to create a subclass of this e grid action uh, column and second is to just override buttons right here okay so if i just override buttons right here i can specify uh, as an associative array where for example delete corresponds to anonymous function which accepts url right there and we can immediately return from this um, html a with delete text for example and url excuse me url okay so this is the delete button however this is not going to work because we need to add some data um, data attributes such as data method to be post as well as data confirm to be some kind of text we don't want to be deleted immediately when we click on the delete however if we look at the interface we see that it displays this delete of course we can put a right here glyph icon um excuse me font awesome icon as well but i'm going to show you a better way how to do this so for this we need to create a child class of this e grid action call so let's go to the project's root um, root directory and right here i'm going to create a new class which which will be action column but that's going to be from grid a uh, folder okay and the namespace will be up uh grid action call okay so this this will be the namespace up grid click ok okay this one is not valid class name okay let's just remove this click ok the class was created and we need to move this class in the grid folder okay so let's create a grid folder and put this action column inside the grid folder okay now we need to extend the action column extend action column from e grid namespace okay and we need to override the particular this particular method uh, so that we can apply the corresponding font or some icons okay let's override the method init default button okay and right here let's copy everything okay from here and paste right here okay so we have overrided method let's import this e namespace 
However, we need to change the place down below where we are giving actually glyph icon, glyph icon, icon name. So let's just give it immediately icon name without any prefixes, okay? And we need to override one more method, which is init default buttons, okay? So let's just override the following method as well. Init default buttons. Let's just copy the following code, paste right here. And instead of this I open pencil and trash, let's take some icons from Font Awesome. So here is Font Awesome link from CDN. Let's just copy CSS, go to a layout and paste at the top right here. Now let's open Font Awesome icons. and find one button for I. Let's take this one. Let's copy the name. We need actually the name, nothing else. So let's go to action column, our action column. And right here, I'm going to put the, the name of the, the classes, basically, of the icon. So I don't want tags. I'm just going to put right there these um, names. OK, good. Next, we need edit. And we can take this one that's going to be far far edit so let's just put right here as well far edit and let's take trash let's take the very first one which will be fas i guess fa trash okay okay good now if we go to index php right here we need to change this namespace okay now i'm going to use action column from my app namespace okay let's save and let's have a look reload the page and i see all three buttons right there if i click this view it opens the view page if i go back and click this pencil it opens the edit page if i click the delete button it, it opens the confirmation the delete confirmation okay I just click cancel and it doesn't do anything. So this is how nice and how uh, good it looks like. I think Bootstrap 4 is much better than Bootstrap 3. So definitely you should move your applications uh, on Bootstrap 4. And if you are new, definitely uh, you should start with Bootstrap 4. All right, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, subscribe if you are not yet subscribed. Let me know in the comment section also what you want to see on my channel and see you in the next time.